Okay, it's recording, you can start. Um, okay, well, let me get my timer out. Um, so just a, a quick off time roadmap before I start my time for this round, I'm going to be beginning with uh, our framework for this round, which ends up being a little lengthy. Um, I will allow if there are any points of clarification or anything like that right after our framework, uh, just to prevent this from becoming some kind of lengthy definition debate. Um, so I'll allow that. Uh, and then after that, I'll move into our contentions for this round. And uh, with time permitting, I'll take whatever POIs arise. Uh, so with that, if everyone is ready for this round. Okay. Uh, can, I have, can I have one second? No problem. Uh, I'm good. Okay. Um, so with that, I will start my time now. Okay, really quickly, let me just start by going through um, the entirety of my framework for this round. Uh, well, or let me start by saying the resolution uh, we are debating the government for on uh, this house as an independent middle school would require students to play for one school sports team per year. Um, our definitions and our framework for this round will be that the house as stated in the res resolution very clearly is an independent middle school. Uh, I'm hearing something, hello? Stopping time. Nope, okay, I'll keep going then, I guess. I'm resuming my time now. Uh, so we defined an independent middle school, given that the house is an independent middle school, as a private, non-public middle school. Um, we define require to be play on one team as of a minimum. Um, we think it pretty obviously should be a minimum because, for example, if a school tells you you're required to do 10 hours of community service, they wouldn't stop you from doing 12 or 14. Sim seems pretty simple there. Uh, we define sports team as any organized competitive team sport, and we provide examples of football, golf, table tennis and soccer uh, as four examples of organized team sports that someone could sign up to play to fulfill this requirement. Um, and then the last thing we'd like to say, or uh, the second last, I'm sorry, uh, is just to be very clear, as with basically everything in the education system, uh, disabled students or injured students would obviously have a pathway to, you know, go out. So if you were one disabled and unable for playing on a, un, unable to play on a sports team, you could get some kind of exemption to prevent you from being required or to let you do some kind of modified form, whatever works for you if you have a physical or mental disability. Um, and then also if you were say injured or if you were say sick, you would obviously be able to call in injured or sick and continue with the sport later. Uh, required would be required generally, but we wouldn't be forcing anyone to play through some severe disability or some severe injury. Um, and the last thing is that we will be weighing this round uh, on net benefit to students. Uh, we believe that the uh, motivation for the action of this school should be what is best uh, for their students and the best of uh, this decision should be made on whether the decision is either better or worse uh, in the interest of the students. Uh, so we believe we will win this round by showing you that the impacts of this will end up actually being positive towards all of the students of the school. Uh, so with that, unless there's any points of clarification on the definitions, which it doesn't seem like there are, and I think we tried to keep it pretty basic. Um, so we have five contentions for this round. Um, our first contention is physical activity. There is a massive, massive issue in the United States with people being generally obese or generally not being as healthy as they should be. On one hand, by getting these kids to go out, play a sport, in the short term, we are keeping them active, we are getting them to go out and do something, they are burning calories, they are being fit, and we are preventing them from going down that road towards obesity and towards an unhealthy lifestyle in the short term. But even more so, we are instilling healthy lessons and long-term habits in them for the rest of their life. Ah. Kids are gonna grow up, uh, I keep hearing somebody, I'm not sure who that is, the, the kids are gonna grow up now, uh, they're gonna go grow up uh, uh, with these habits of being uh, of being athletic, of going out and staying active, and of being fit and not living a sedentary lifestyle. Um, and by 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 instilling these habits, not only will they be healthy in the short term, but in the long term. And as they grow up, they will be healthy. If they have children, they can instill healthy habits in them. This will, in the long term, lead them to live healthy lives, not just in the short term, but again throughout the rest of their lives as adults. Um, our second contention is the social impacts. So on one point, uh, this helps people make friends. There are a lot of people who in the middle school level have trouble making friends and making substantive connections. Uh, the camaraderie and the bond that people see on a sports team fosters these friendships. It helps people with these social things. So a lot of people who might have lack of confidence issues, who might simply be lonely from not having enough friends, will be able to make friends, will be able to develop more confidence, will be able to feel this camaraderie and this bond in a way that will be, again, not only good for them in the short term in terms of their mental health and their social status, but will also be better for them in the long term as they will learn social lessons, as they will get better at social skills like that. Um, 
Our third contention is that they will learn very valuable lifetime skills like teamwork and discipline. Uh, one, these are all team sports, so they teach you the very valuable skills of working together as a team, of partnering with people, of listening, of cooperating, of, you know, listening to other people's opinions. Um, and at the same time, team sports are known for their ability to teach discipline, the, you know, hard work of practicing every day, of going out, of, you know, going through that routine, specifically in terms of, again, practices and games. Both of those instill those two important skills of one, working as a team, working with other individuals, including other people. And at the same time, the skills of discipline, of working hard, of never giving up, both of which are really important skills for these middle schoolers to learn, again, both in the short term now, and important skills for them to carry with them both out of middle school, into high school, into college, through the rest of their life. These skills are really, really important. So we need them to learn them uh, as soon as possible and for them to kind of stay with them throughout the rest of their life. That's gonna be one of the most important things you're gonna see in this round judge is that not only on the short term is this gonna be hugely beneficial for the students, but also on the long term, the skills and the habits that they're gonna learn from being members of these sports teams are gonna end up hugely, hugely benefiting them uh, again in the long term. Now, our fourth contention is that it boosts school spirit. Uh, by having more activity in these team sports and by having everyone have some role in a team sport, uh, they feel engaged with the team, they feel engaged with the spirit, they feel engaged with the school. Uh, you know, they feel as if they have a stake in it, they feel more involved. So this leads people to one, enjoy school more, be a little more fun, be a little more engaged. And then as a result, be more engaged in school, potentially be a little more focused during their classes, uh, you know, be a little more a caring member of the community, maybe help friends out with their homework, maybe tutor someone, maybe just being nice to a friend, you know, cleaning up the hallway. There's so many different things that this could manifest in, but this increase in school spirit just leads these people to be more happy and engaged with their school. And again, yeah, that's going to manifest in so many different ways. People, you know, helping out around the school, people helping each other out, people working harder on their assessments. There's so many positive impacts that has there. Um, then our fifth and final contention uh, is that some of these people, uh, and it's gonna be a small number, but could some of these could end up having professional athletic careers. Um, we know the odds aren't that high and we know there probably won't be a large number of them, but we're weighing on the total impact, the net benefit to the students. So if any one of these students managed to foster a professional athletic career, this would end up being something that would have a massive, massive positive tangible impact on them and their family in that they would have, you know, socioeconomically a far, far better class of life. They might be able to donate money to charity. They might be able to donate money back to the school. Um, but again, weighing on the impact to the students, if just one student were able to make it to a professional level career, the millions they make and the kind of massive boost in the quality of life they live as a result of that would be a huge, huge positive impact. So again, going through, this is going to teach students to be both active uh, and athletic in the short term and in the long term as they grow up. It's going to help them make friends and be more social in the short term and as they grow up. It will teach some really valuable and important skills of teamwork and discipline in the short term and as they grow up, skills they'll carry with them in life. It'll boost their school spirit, making them more engaged and active in the school and in learning. And it could end up literally shaping their life and causing a massive, massive boost in their quality of life. So for all those reasons, for the massive, massive benefit that this causes to the students, we very strongly urge a ballot for the government and we thank you all for your time in this very productive round. Great, thank you. Now we'll hear from the opposing team. I will be speaking first. Uh, just a brief overview of what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about the definitions and framework very briefly before going on to my case and then responding to side propositions. If that's good with everyone and everyone can hear me properly, I'm going to get going on my first word. Great. Um, my time begins now, honorable speaker, I first want to go over this brief idea of definitions and frameworks they've laid out. We really agree with most of what they're saying, and I think we all think it's valid. Their examples are well, uh, well taken. One thing we do have a little bit of issue is the inclusion of table tennis as a team sport in, because it's something that's offered in middle school very much, but we don't see that becoming a big issue in the round. And so we are unwilling to actually make it a big issue here. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go through my three points, and I'm going to go through theirs. We have three contentions for you today. First, pursuing other interests. Second, undue emphasis on sports. And third, social anxiety. Let's start with this first contention, pursuing other interests. Basically, what we see is that when you force people to play school sports, they're going to take that time to actually do those sports, opposed to other things that are more important and more important to them specifically. Because the truth of the matter is that some people just aren't athletes, and they can recognize that from the very beginning of their middle school career. And that's fine. If somebody is a really good writer, or a really good speaker, or really good at any other number of things, maybe they're good at acting, why should they be devoting this time to sports, which they're not good about, opposed to devoting it to trying to be on the debate team or trying to write for the local newspaper, 
for the school or trying to act in the, in the most recent play. Because what we'll see is that when we implement this resolution, when we actually require all these students to go to a sport, they're going to put more of their energy, more of their time into the sport. Because again, they're middle schoolers. You can't ask them to have all these different commitments. So what's likely going to happen is that if they're forced to play soccer in the fall, for instance, they're going to be less likely to try out for the musical that time. And that's really bad because especially for individuals who are actually affected by this resolution, which are people who wouldn't otherwise play sports, they're going to be less likely to actually pursue their true interests. And the impacts of this are really bad because it means people who are good at what they're actually good at won't have a time to develop those skills. And that's what matters most. Again, we don't really see a reason why sports should be so much more important than these other pursuing interests. And so for people who are good at those certain things, it's really important that we prioritize the development of those skills as those will be the ones that are most helpful down the line. Side proposition keeps talking about long-term, about the future for these students. And they actually still argue though that individuals who are good at other things should be putting all this time into something that they'll never actually use going forward in high school and college. So with that overview, I'd now like to go to my second tension. That's about this undue emphasis on sports because we see a very unique culture in the United States where there's this real significant emphasis on sports from a really young age. And it's damaging for a bunch of reasons. This culture around uh, sports can just be toxic in itself. We see this with the issues with locker rooms, guys' locker rooms that end up being havens for really uh, bad behavior that is both sexist and racist and all these other things that are really issues in locker rooms themselves. And so we're exposing more and more people to this environment and actually we're pushing it. We're, we're saying that this is an important and a uh, thing that's worth emphasis, which we don't think is true at all. But secondly, there's an issue where all this emphasis on sports means that people don't really have another option. If somebody's really focused on trying to get their wrestling career going, or trying to get basketball going, then there's an issue where they get injured, then they're never going to have an actual way to get into the clothes they'd like to. Or if they somehow are trying to go for wrestling, then it can cause really long-term the damages to that individual. These are both really damaging effects. So we see them on both levels. First of all, because of the actual culture in sports on any level. And second of all, that it causes these people to have one track minds where they're trying to get into a certain school or trying to further their career in a certain sport, even though- the information? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, don't you think in actuality, it actually more forces a one track mind when you don't allow students to broaden themselves by taking on sports, given that you're advocating that students should only focus on the one thing they're good at and not spend their middle school career broadening themselves to other interests? Yeah, I want to point out a really important word you use in that POI, allow. See, that's what we're doing. We are allowing everybody to do what they'd like. We're not forcing anyone to do anything. And so when you're saying we're not allowing people to do sports, that's absolutely not true. In fact, we're doing the exact opposite. You guys are the only ones who are actually preventing anyone from doing anything. And so I think the wording of that POI answers itself. Now I want to go on to the third contention that I have today. That's about social anxiety. Because the truth is, even beyond the culture of sports, some people will just feel out of place in these athletic, athletic events. They'll feel made fun of, maybe, if they're not as good as other people. Because, of course, they won't be, because they weren't doing it in the first place. They'll automatically feel out of place, and especially for impressionable people of this age, who can really be affected on an emotional level, it, it'll lead to serious social anxiety, which will actually worsen the problems that Side Proposition has talked about how certain people who don't play sports feel like they can't make friends. It'll actually worsen it when they're being made fun of because they can't run as fast as other people on the team. This is a really big issue and actually one that only we can solve because this social anxiety will perpetuate throughout the entire experience and actually potentially into their future, which is really, really damaging. So having gone through our three contentions, which I'll remind you are pursuing other interests, undue emphasis on sports and the social anxiety that it causes, and I want to go into their five contentions. So the first is about physical activity. And this is a really important point in this round because it's something that they're gonna keep on trying to bring up again and again. And it's not true for three reasons. First, the real issue behind obesity in America is nutrition. This has been, provenly increasing, this has been proved increasingly true because we see this as the standards for physical activity have been similar throughout the entire history of the US. But obesity is a new problem. And why is that? Well, it's because all of a sudden there have been more and more fast food restaurants, the food has gone increasingly less healthy, and that's the actual issue. So nutrition is the main issue here. That's only mitigatory. I want to prove to you why this actually isn't an issue at all. Because almost all, um, almost all middle schools have some sort of PE requirement. And so we can assume that just because they're not doing a school sports team doesn't mean they're doing no physical activity at all. Maybe they're instead actually doing some uh, mixed PE course that involves some running but not as much. Now, again, we actually think this is better than trying to be on the table tennis team or on the golf team, where actually the amount of, in, uh, the amount of energy and physical activity that's happening is lesser. And so this PE requirement is the second rebuttal and actually disproves it. And then finally, we don't actually think people who are on these sports teams who are theoretically getting more physical activity will actually be doing so. If somebody is forced onto the 
tracks, uh, track and field team, then when they're running their race, they have no interest in actually trying really hard. So you'll have to see people walking the mile as you do in middle school all the time. So when you force people into sports teams, there's no guarantee that they're actually going to commit to it. They're actually going to be engaged in physical activity. And they have to prove why this isn't true. I want to go to their second contention. That's about social impacts. But again, I have two responses. First, this directly clashes with our social anxiety point, which proved to you, honorable speaker, why people on the sports team will feel left behind, and will feel made fun of, and will feel out of place. Instead, if they're actually with all of the people who also act and they're actors, they'll feel way better. They'll have much better social connections with people who are like them and who have those similar interests. This is why it's more important to actually pursue those interests if they're not interested in sports. Now, third, they talk about lifetime skills. To this, I have two responses. First, you can learn these lifetime skills in other areas, notably the interests I talked about in my first convention. You can still learn these ideas of cooperation and discipline from other places. But secondly, I wanna point out that some of these aren't even gonna be learned there because people won't be engaged in the actual sport. Unless the only reason that they can learn discipline or learn cooperation is when they commit themselves to actually trying in the sport. And they haven't proven to you why that would happen. Because we'd argue that wouldn't happen at all. People would resent the fact that they have to do the sport and therefore try as absolutely little as they could possibly get away with. That won't teach discipline, and that certainly won't teach cooperation. This goes actually into their fourth contention, too, and they're talking about boosting school spirit, because we think it will do the exact opposite. Naturally, if somebody is forced into a sports team that they don't want to compete in, they will resent the people who force them to do so, and that is the school. So it won't boost school spirit. In fact, it will boost the opposite, school resentment, because people will resent the administration for forcing them to do things they don't want to do. This is a natural reaction that happens all the time. When people restrict your autonomy, you get annoyed at them as individuals and them as an administration here too. So we do the exact opposite, and you should, think we, and you should actually flip this point onto our side of the flow. And finally, they talk about professional athletic careers. And there are two big problems here. First of all, as they admitted, there's tiny, tiny probability of this. And therefore the effect is just really minimal. But even if you buy that it has a significant effect, honestly, if a kid goes pro, it's not because the, their independent middle school required them to play sports one term. There's no reason that LeBron James is the only reason that he's in the NBA is because his middle school required him to do so. People who actually have a chance of going to athletically pro careers are already gonna be engaged in athletics. And therefore this won't actually affect them. Now, honestly, for all of these reasons, honorable speaker, I urge you to strongly consider side opposition for this debate, because ultimately, we're looking forward for these kids it just makes more sense to not require them to do these sports. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we hear from the second speaker from Team Gov. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm going to start off with a brief off-time roadmap, and then I'm going to check to see if everyone's ready, and then I'll start. So I'm going to start off with uh, one key clarification about the round, uh, and then I'm going to go through my opponent's contentions, and then I will go through my own contentions. So uh, if anyone's not ready, you can pause me right now. Is everyone good? Okay. With that, I will begin my time now. Okay, judges, so the first key clarification that needs to be made in this round is that we are talking about middle school students. We are not talking about high school, high school students or even college students who already have some certain interest that they know they're completely invested in and that's what they're gonna go into the world, that's gonna be the job market they enter, all of that stuff, right? I tell you that the vast majority of middle school students don't have some interest that they know 100% they wanna go into. The vast majority of middle school students, we think, it makes more sense for them to explore multiple interests. They should be exploring a lot because most students don't know exactly what they want to do with their life at this point. They try to present a world in which the vast majority of students already have some keen interest in writing, a keen interest in acting, and that's the only thing they want to devote themselves to. I have two responses to this. One, I tell you, most students don't have this keen interest already. Most middle school students don't have one thing that they want to devote all their time to. And the second thing too is it's not like we're making them go to like 10 hour practices every single day and spend tons of time. The same way as if I'm making you take one extra class a day, if I'm making you take like math, an extra class a day, that doesn't drastically change your schedule. And especially if you want to, if you, if you like want to explore other stuff, you're going to go ahead and explore those things anyway. You're still going to have time to go ahead and explore all these other interests. That's the key clarification that needs to be made here. Again, these are middle school students. These are not some college students who already have some set interests that they're just dedicated to go with for their entire life. 
So with that, let me go through each of their contentions right now. Uh, they, they basically just agree with our framework completely. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be stuck in this for the rest of the debate. Thank you for accepting it. Uh, so their first contention is about pursuing other interests, right? And they tell you that this time will go away from other interests. And I have a few responses to this. The first thing is when you're a middle school age student, a lot of this stuff is about exploring, right? When you look at high school students or college students, you have the ability to change a lot of your courses, right? You have the ability to say, okay, I'm probably only going to take math classes this year, or I'm only going to take writing courses this year. But what is the, what does a curriculum make you do? It makes you take classes in math. It makes you take classes in history and English and all of those fields because we understand that middle school students are nowhere near fully developed. They still need to continue looking at a lot of a lot of different options. We can't force them into a situation in which you're only doing one thing. Yeah, I'll take your POI. Won't the requirement of forcing middle school students to pursue one singular thing, a sports team, detract from their ability to explore? No, not at all. So that's that's the same thing to saying, like, wouldn't forcing a student to take math detract from their ability to do other things? That's not true. It's not like they're spending all of their time doing math when they're in school now. They're just spending some of their time doing math, too. And as we tell you in a lot of our contentions, and I'll get back to this when I go to my own case, there's a lot of positives you get from doing sports. It's not like you're just doing sports to waste time. You're going to get positives from it, too, but it's not not going to take up your full time. Next, my next response to that is that middle schoolers already have a lot of commitments, right? Middle schoolers tend to do a lot of different activities because middle schoolers are really focused on being well-rounded. That's a thing. I like I can just think about the activities I was doing in middle school. I was I was doing debate. I was doing sports teams. I was doing tons of stuff. Do I do all of those like, those activities now? No. But that's the whole point of middle school. A lot of middle school is about exploring and about trying as many activities as you can. The next thing to understand too is if they're already really heavily invested in something else, right? Like it's acting or writing, whether, regardless of what it is, they're likely still going to spend a lot of time on it because they're already heavily invested in it. It's not like the zero sum game in which just because now I'm making you play 45 minutes a day on sports that you're just going to completely drop an activity that you're really already invested in. That's the key thing to understand here. That you're, like, you're easily going to have time for that. My next response to this is that they're not doing this all year. They have tons of time over the year. They're just doing this for some portion of the year. They're not doing this at every single time. So yeah, maybe you're missing out on that one play during the year. You can just do the play later in the year. There's multiple plays throughout the year. You're going to have options to do stuff. And then my final response to this is that sports are just generally important because of all the pauses we tell you in each of our contentions. And I'll go back to those later in this speech. Their second contention is that there's an undue emphasis on sports in our world. So first, they talk about this toxic locker room environment. Once again, I remind our opponents that again we are focusing on middle school students there maybe there's a toxic locker room environment in like professional sports teams or maybe even in high school students but you're telling me that middle school students have a toxic locker room environment no not at all what actually ends up happening in our world is middle school students are going to start to respect the kids who they see sit playing sports you're going to think hey we didn't have interest together before i didn't like you before but now that i see that you're playing sports you're playing things that are similar to me i like you a lot more now and we're they're actually going to create a positive environment between them because they're going to say hey we actually do have some stuff in common with each other and we can be friends now next Again, this is middle school, not college. You want to broaden yourself and you want to explore. And then also people who, and this is a really key response here. People who are going to play sports either way will play sports in either world, right? The key thing to understand here is now the people who don't want to play sports will now start playing sports in our world. And the key thing to understand, those are the people who need to play sports the most because they likely have a hard time socially interacting with other people. They have a hard time making friends and they're not really like they don't have this opportunity to become friends with tons of people during their school and people probably view them as a misfit because they don't play sports now when they start playing sports they're more likely to find a lot of friends they don't want to shoo themselves in and only be friends with the theater kids only be friends with the kids who write because the key thing is all these kids have different values and i think in middle school it's really important that you diversify your friends and try to become friends with as many different people as possible to understand how they work once again these are the students who need it the most the students who don't want to play sports in the South status quo right now are the ones who really need this push to become friends with more people. And let's be completely honest. Let's talk about something that's happening in our country right now. We talked about obesity. Let's talk about the suicide epidemic too. There's so many people in our country who are committing suicide right now because they're struggling to make friends. They're struggling for all this stuff. We are stopping a portion of that through here by giving those students more friends. Uh, and then their, their third contention is that some people will feel out of place in sports. Uh, maybe, at, maybe at the start, some people will feel out of place. I, like, that is true. But I think over time, when other students won't continue to like dismiss them, because they'll realize that, hey, these kids actually share similar interests with us. They're willing to do it. And when you just make kids like work with each other, when you put them in groups, most of the time, they end up becoming friends. Because 
kids are very similar, a lot of them. And a lot of the like things that break up kids are really artificial and just things made up in their own heads. When they actually talk to each other and actually start becoming friends with each other, they will easily become friends with each other. I think we just know that all that from being personal experience and being middle schoolers at some point. Also, you can choose a sport that doesn't give them high anxiety. They act like your only option is if you're a bad runner, you're forced into track. That's not true. You can easily pick table tennis. You can pick uh, football, soccer, you can pick, there's tons of options here. You can swim if you don't want to do anything on land. There's a lot of different options here. Now, let's go back to our own contention. Contention one, we tell you about physical activity. I'm going to have a response to every single one of the responses here. The first response is that nutrition is the main problem. First, sports teams are going to promote nutrition to perform well because coaches want their kids to perform well. Their second response is that they already have PE requirements. One, we don't know that PE is mandatory at the school, so they can't go ahead and say that. But also, we tell you that PE doesn't go far enough because if everyone has PE requirements in the status quo, then why do we still see this obesity epidemic right now? Why do we keep on seeing problems occurring right now? And then their third response is that if you force someone in the track and field team, they might not try as hard. The first thing is they can easily develop an interest. A lot of middle school students walk into something and think they don't have an interest and then end up developing it. And this might happen to a few people. We'll tell you the vast majority of people won't join a team that they're not interested in. They'll join a sport that they're more interested in. Our second contention is helps people make friends, increases camaraderie and bonds, makes the school a better place in general. Third contention, they tell you you can learn these lifelong skills in other areas and people won't be engaged as a sport. People can develop an interest and coaches can make you participate. Students would respect you more if, you're, if, they, if you like mm -hmm. see that they have similar interests to you. That's just a, a true thing that would happen. And then also you can learn mis history and math even if you don't have a keen interest in it in this current status quo right now. You don't have to have a keen interest in something to learn it. Our, like our schools already make you do that no matter what. Boost school spirit is a pretty strong thing. And then our fifth contention, we tell you some of these people would become professional athletes even if only one individual student becomes a professional athlete the benefit to that one student how drastically it would change your life is huge so you should be voting us for us based off that i think i've shown how all of their contentions fall and all of ours still stand and for those reasons thank you thank you and now we'll be back to the gov team As, an, as a quick off time roadmap, I'm going to op in, I'm going to offer three main points of contention in this debate that both sides seem to value before moving on to rebut our opponents three, uh, before moving on to rebut our opponents five contentions before reestablishing our own three. And if everybody's ready. Um, start. Okay. Honorable speakers. Clearly, both sides value the importance of establishing the exploration of many interests in, in a middle school environment. We all agree that creating some form of, rel of a, of a well-rounded experience while developing important interests is absolutely imperative. Side, side government believes that these uh, interests cannot be developed outside of sports at this age, but uh, side opposition absolutely, absolutely disagrees because some of the most important long-lasting interests uh, ever that ad adults will even experience were maintained in that early middle school environment, and very few of them actually have to do with athletics in today's modern world. The importance of exploring multiple, multiple, multiple interests can't be understated in terms of student choice. Both sides have used language emphasizing the importance of student, students being able to choose what they actually want to do. And how is a resolution that implements a forced, uh, a forced institution on students to, to distract from that choice as a whole in any way promoting an expansion right. of their interests and developments? No, thank you. How is it, how is it possibly reasonable to say um, how is it possibly reasonable to say that by forcing students to participate in sports, we're allowing them to expand their interests. We're allowing them the ability to expand this development and interest in many other ways. And once again, the benefits offered by sports are offered in many other respects, which is the next point of contention in this debate here. Many other forms of uh, middle school involvement that boost essentially every single contention of, of side governments is found in other interests besides sports, whether it's debate teams, other competitive intellectual interests, you know things like art um, that are that are also found in in these interests, if not even more than sports, and they are directly correlated to um, in a way sports that's not and clear 
a misconception. Such government has painted middle school environments as some utopia, peachy, amazing place in which everybody just wants to make friends and sports directly correlates to the benefits of, fr of friendship making. And they threw out some pretty wild examples, which I will address here. But clearly, um, the participation in sports in no way in a realistic middle school environment can magically reduces the barriers of between friendships in a realistic American middle school setting. This is absurd. Yes, what was the POI? How can you uh, like ensure that students are gonna be doing these other activities that you say teamwork or discipline to be instilled in? Uh, there's absolutely, how can you ensure students will participate in the activities? The point is that students have the ability to choose which of the which of these activities they are most involved in. So I in, no, thank you. Students want to be involved in these activities, as you clearly mentioned, and there should they should have the ability to do so in other interests. Honorable speakers, I will begin by rebutting our opponents' uh, five main five main contentions here before moving on to rebuild side government's main points. Their first contention of physical activity. Once again, they. Uh, uh, they dismissed our point of, of um, nutrition being the main cause of obesity in this country as saying that sports will help nutrition. But in middle school sports, it's unlikely that these students will be learning these nutritional benefits that they actually need. As we see in many other countries besides the US, physical activity is maintained and more beneficial school lunches are maintained. And clearly the problem in the US is not a is not a lack of competitional sports, but it's a lack of nutritional education. Um, for their second in impact of, of uh, social impacts, they state some they, they state that sports will uh, boost these social impacts and make students feel more part of a community. But this is absolutely absurd, considering that many students do not want to be involved in this community in the first place. And students involved in that and students involved in that community in that community often don't want them to be involved either. This is just a realistic aspect of reality, and this contributes to bullying and the suicide rate that our opponents brought up. Their third contention of lifetime skills. Um, once again, these skills can easily be developed, if not better, and more correlated to the actual realities of adult life in other academic pursuits, including um, debate, art interests, intellectual competitions that don't have the incredibly negative drawbacks we see in these, uh, in these competitive sports uh, that we've discussed. In their, third in their fourth contention of boosting school spirits, once again, um, school, school spirit can absolutely be maintained in other intellectual, in other intellectual pursuits because once again, shouldn't these schools really be about learning and developing leaders of the future? And clearly, if we're um, making students proud of the, uh, of the development they're seeing in that respect, they would have just that same amount of school spirit because as my partner brought up, if we force them to participate in these sports, they will have resentment towards that school community that forced them often in this bullying environment that is the harsh competitive nature of American sports, yes. Will there be students who don't have who don't have any interest and just don't want to? Well, these students should be given the resources to find what they actually will enjoy. By forcing them to do sports, we are not in any way promoting anything positive for these students who don't want to be interested in anything. That's absolutely absurd. If you're if you're saying that these students won't have the ability to participate in it don't want to participate in anything. Why would the solution to that be to force uh, the uh, to be for to force participation of sports on these students? Follow for their fifth contention athletes, no thank you. For their fifth contention of professional athletes, my partner addressed this contention, but once again, not only is it an incredibly small number of students that will already be participating in it, but it's, um, but it's, it's quite absurd to think that the implementation of middle school sports is in any way going to contribute to a surplus in professional athletes. That's a pretty distorted aspect of reality. Moving on to our first, uh, to our uh, side government's first, side opposition's first contention of pursuing other interests. Point of information. No thank you. Uh, side, side government stated that uh, most, most students don't uh, have these interests developed, but honorable speakers, we need to be offering these students the opportunity to develop any, uh, any and all interests and forcing any singular activity on them is not something that's gonna be it's going to be achieving this goal. Side government continually brought up the I connecting sports directly to math and history classes, but honorable speakers, this is quite absurd. These academic classes contribute directly to preparedness for adult life and sports, although they maintain a Although they maintain small benefits, they uh, are directly matched by other intellectual pursuits that can maintain exactly those same benefits and increase those and increase those students' preparedness for their adult life. For a second contention of undue emphasis on sports, they stated 
um, painting this perfect utopia of the middle school environment, they stated that the sports culture in middle schools is inherently not flawed and that there's actually not bullying and resentment, which is news to side opposition because in the status quo, clearly there is a harsh, there is a harsh competition culture among students who are arrogant in their sports ability towards students who don't share that same sports ability and forcing all these students to participate in the same activity contributes only to a bullying, hazing, and discriminatory culture among middle school students that is in no way beneficial for any party involved. Um, they also brought up the example that somehow not participating in sports increases the suicide epidemic. I in no way see links to this point because as we've seen in the status quo, bullying as a whole, which is directly increased by participating in sports, uh, raises this suicide epidemic to a absolutely heightened level. For a third contention of social anxiety, uh, side, um, side government stated that simply these students are going to be able to just magically connect with everybody on their sports team and everything will be fine and there's going to be a perfect unified community but honorable speakers consider the reality of this of this claim how is it fair to say that students who do not share the same interests and are forced in this institution of, of competitive sports which has the incredibly negative implications which we've outlined how is it fair to say that that just perfect cohesive community will be formed what we should be doing is illustrating communities that uh, are merged by central core interests of these students to ensure that they can develop these social skills going forward and use them in adult life. Honorable speakers, considering the health and well-being of these students and considering that the sports culture in these middle schools is not the utopia that side government would like you to believe, considering the betterment of these, of these students and to ensure the education of future leaders, I urge a strong side opposition ballot. Thank you. Great, thank you. And now we hear from the opposing rebuttal. Okay, um, can everyone hear me all right? And if I start like cutting out halfway through my internet, it's been a little shaky today. Just let me know so that I can pause and keep going. Thank you. Okay, um, if everyone's ready then, a little bit of off time roadmap. I'm just gonna address two important pieces of clash, clarification, however you wanna call it. Not in a way to debate around what we think is a central issue. Okay, um, if everyone's ready, my time will start. Now, honorable speaker, before I go on to actually weigh the debate around the issue that matters most, I wanna start by answering a couple of questions that side proposition have asked again and again and again, and demonstrate why they actually don't have as much relevance in this debate as they think they do. The first is, well, what would everyone do who didn't pursue these other interests? They've asked this a bunch, they've tried to have a gotcha moment with these questions for our first contention. Not everyone will pursue these interests. See, this is contradictory and a little bit hypocritical to what they've been saying. Because throughout this entire debate, they've maintained this notion that actually middle schoolers are really good people who want to pursue what they want to pursue. They've talked in their contentions about how as soon as they get into these sports, all of a sudden they're going to be totally invigorated by them, that they're going to be inspired by these sports, and therefore they're going to try really hard and try to better themselves. But then when it comes to our side, when we argue the same thing, that they're actually going to pursue other interests, they deem this totally ridiculous and out of the picture. This is inconsistent and it's totally hypocritical for their side. They have to pick one of these things. And so if they're arguing over here that all of a sudden people are gonna to commit to these sports really significantly, that middle schoolers are trying to explore as many things as they can. And then when we argue that same thing, that middle schoolers will try to explore and pursue interests, they argue that actually that isn't true, that that will never happen. And this honorable speaker is totally unacceptable. Now, even if you do buy this, even if you do think that no one, none of these middle schoolers will actually pursue other interests, we still win on this point. Because what do you do with a student who is not interested in anything at all? Not sports, not extracurriculars, not writing, not debate, not anything at all. They don't want to pursue any of it. Who actually helps that kid? Well, we see that that kid probably doesn't want to then just engage a bunch in sports. And I'm going to talk about that more when I talk about the mental side. But somebody who's been rejected by their peers like that, that they, don't want to, they don't want to have any interest in any of these societies, will actually need to protect their emotional and health and well-being. So this is the central guiding question of the debate, and it actually brings me nicely into this final weighing mechanism, because that is when mental well-being. And they've talked about this themselves. They have said again and again that actually mental well-being is important because it can lead to suicide, depression, long-term anxiety. And because of all these really damaging effects that we agree come from mental health, under their framework of net benefits, it must be the most important part of this round because it has to do with death itself. And nothing is worse than death itself. And therefore, this singular issue must outweigh all others. And so when we win this debate, it will be because of mental well-being. If we win this point, we must win this debate simply because of the scale and the magnitude of the impacts. So here's why only we can protect mental well-being. I want to illustrate you first this world that 
that they keep proposing, but that they've never actually explained in full. And I'm going to show you why it's so not true. Basically, they argue that as soon as you force kids into a school, into a sport, instead of first resenting the people who force them to do this, they'll actually appreciate it, that they'll thank them, and that they'll really give a good effort to try to be the best that they can be. Now, this is just unrealistic. And when I pointed this out the very first time, when I pointed out that, in fact, they will not all of a sudden be reinvigorated by school spirit, thanking the administration for forcing them to these activities they don't want to do, when I said instead they'd resent it, they never give me a proper response. So this is not the reality. Now, secondly, they also point out that when they go into these locker rooms, when they engage with their friends, that everybody is a kind and supportive community in middle school. But that's not the truth. The truth is that kids sometimes are mean, that bullying happens everywhere, and it's a massive issue in the country. And the way that they solve this bullying issue within sports teams, the way they solve that the effect that other students have on emotional health is by ignoring it, by not bringing it up at all. They don't talk about how actually this can have massive effects for social anxiety, that kids make fun of each other, that they bully each other, because that happens. And only side opposition has even recognized this. They fail to do so. They talk only of the social impacts of making friends with people who do different things, and that um, middle schoolers make a good faith effort to actually make friends. But this is just ignoring the problem in today's debate. Because the true problem is about mental well-being. We already see a bullying issue in today's society. And when we force people to actually confront these bullies, to go right next to them and try to actually be uh, on these teams, we'll see it increase even more. So honorable speaker, that is the real way that we win this debate around the central issue of mental well-being. Because it is undeniably the most important of this round. And it is one that only we can even recognize or win in today's debate. Thank you very much. And I strongly urge an opposition ballot. Thank you. And now we're back to go for our last rebuttal. Okay, um, just a quick off time roadmap before I start my speech. I'm going to be starting with one clarifying point. Um, then I'm going to go through uh, my own flow, the government flow. Then I will go through the opposition flow. Uh, and then I will come down to weighing where I've actually broken this round uh, into three voter issues under net benefit, not one singular uh, monolithic voter, is voter issue. So with that, uh, if everybody's ready. Okay, cool. I will start my time now. Okay, first off, let's get to this one important point that we've touched on this whole round. Guys, it's middle school. How solid were your interests in middle school? How much did they change since then? What were you interested in? Are you still interested, judges, in the same things you were in middle school? I was interested in Pokemon. I'm not interested in that anymore. For example, our point is just this. One, as my partner told you, there are many people who have no interests at all in middle school who would end up doing absolutely nothing. They try to tell you there's other places you can get skills, but they never allow for the fact that some people would do absolutely nothing at all. More so though, we tell you it's middle school. You don't know what your interests are. Just because you're not interested in sports now doesn't mean you won't be interested in them. And as my partner told you, even if you're not interested, the people who decide not to are the people who need this the most, who need the social skills and life skills the most. Um, so with that, I'm now going to get into our own flow here, going uh, contention by contention. In our first contention, we talk about activity. Judges, their only rebuttal is that, oh, nutrition's more important. My partner does a great job of dealing with this. One, we are the only side that benefits nutrition. A sports team might give you nutritional advice to make you better athletes. Without a sports team, you get no nutritional advice. So what do we have? We have physical activity and nutrition, they have neither. We have double solvency. They in no way solve for this. So even if they say nutrition is the bigger issue, we still solve for nutrition. They don't. Activity still goes to us. They say PE is mandatory. My partner told you there's no reason to believe that. They never responded, that, responded to that. So you can drop that point. And even if you buy it's mandatory, he told you PE doesn't go far enough. Um, and then lastly, they made this point that people won't be interested. So they just won't try. If you're not interested in history, you can't just not try. Your teacher makes you be active. Your teacher makes you learn. The coaches will do the same thing. If you're like, I don't like math, you can't just give up and do nothing. You might not be as active as the most active student, but your teachers will still make you try. They'll still make you learn something. So their argument that students could just do absolutely nothing isn't true. The coaches will make you. Um, our second intention was about the social impacts. And all they really said is it clashes with their point about social anxiety. But what I'll tell you specifically there is we have warrants judge. They don't. We tell you that the team camaraderie and the shared interest of being on a uh, athletic team are going to lead them to bond and be friends. And that since they're middle schoolers, they won't be as hostile as they tell you. What warrants do they have, Judge? They give you nothing. They just say, oh, they'll be mean. So side with the warrants, Judge. Look who gives you, look who gives you a reason to believe they're right. Um, in our third contention, we talk about teamwork and discipline. They tell you people will get these skills from other areas. We ask you two questions. One, where? They never really gave you examples. We told you where you get teamwork. We told you where you get discipline. They never gave you examples. And even so, Judge, listen to my partner's argument. They're not making people do these other things. In their world, someone could do nothing and gain none of these skills. So we totally win that point. Lastly, we 
we talk about school spirit. And again, they made the same rebuttal. Of, oh, there's other ways to boost it. And again, we ask you how, and how do you make that happen? The same rebuttal works. Then lastly, to the point about pro athletes, they say, oh, there won't be some surplus of pro athletes. We agree. We're not saying we create a surplus of pro athletes. All we're saying is if even one athlete ends up making it pro, the millions of dollars they make, that huge positive impact is massive. And we're weighing on net benefit to the students. Every impact to a student matters. So that positive of impact is huge. Going to uh, their contentions now, their first contention is saying you can pursue other interests. One, as my partner told you, you know, this is one season a year, a few days a week, a few hours. You can still do many other things. Also, like he said, though, your interests aren't solid. This isn't college. You're not like, oh, I know I'm going to be a computer programmer when I grow up. You have no idea what you're going to be. You're meant to pursue other interests. It's middle school. Um, their other point, their second interest is that there's an undue emphasis on sports. And again, as my partner told you, it's middle school. There isn't this toxic locker room environment. And actually, Judge, look at the Warrens. We gave you the Warrens for why the camaraderie and the shared interests will lead to friendship. And the same point for their social anxiety point. We gave you the Warrens for why we see friendship and we see camaraderie. They give you no Warrens whatsoever. So we are the side that should win that point. Now, when it comes to weighing this round, we can't just decide based on one voter issue. It comes down to net benefit to the students, which breaks up into three issues. First, physical activity. Second, the life skills they learn. And three, the social skills they learn. Although I do buy their argument, judges, when they say that whichever thing is most likely to lead to deaths is the most important issue. When it comes to physical activity, we believe we fully won. Even though they tell you that nutrition is a bigger issue than activity, we believe we lead to more activity and more nutrition. So on both counts, we win. We think this should be the point that wins us the debate. Like they said, whichever thing is most likely to lead to deaths is the most important in net benefit. We don't think suicide is the most likely cause of death in this world. We think it's death by obesity. We think it's death by heart attacks. We think it is long-term death from living a sedentary, non-active lifestyle. We think long-term, more people will die from lack of activity than from some suicide. They told you, judges, that the suicide risk is low. They kept saying people won't kill themselves. People won't kill themselves. That's an exaggeration. People will die from lack of activity. So this should be the point, like they told you, that's most important that wins us the round. Even if you don't buy that, judge, we still win all the voter issues. So we should still win this round. The next voter issue is that of life skills. We tell you how we teach te students teamwork and discipline, and we give you warrants for how they learn both. They tell you there's other places to learn it, but again, like we tell you, they don't tell you how they learn it, and even so, they don't force the other kids to do this. The kids who just do nothing and not learn the skills. We also tell you about learning school spirit um, in this life skills point, and then they really have nothing there. They have no rebuttal to that other than this point about undue emphasis, which you've already rebutted. rebutted. So this point about life skills in terms of who betters the students for their lives, so we give them all these skills where they will lead a better life. And then lastly, this point about social skills, it comes down to warrants. So we've explained to you why due to the shared interest and the camaraderie of a sports team, these kids will be friends. All they've said is, oh no, they'll be mean. And th they said, I think at one point, oh, maybe they'll be bullied because they're slow. If they're slow, they can play ping pong where speed doesn't matter. They've given you no real warrants for why these people will be bullied. So the social skills points also goes to us. So all three of these voter issues, judges, all, goes, all go to us, every one of them. But even if you just give us that point of physical activity, even if you give them both of the other points, just off of physical activity, because it causes the most, death, most deaths, we believe we've won. We believe off of all three, we've one, we believe there's not a single voter issue that the government loses on. So for all these reasons and for the benefit of the students, we very strongly urge a ballot for the government. And we thank you all for what's been a very fun and productive round. Thank you, everyone. We will now deliberate. Um, judges, if you want to DM me on Discord with your decisions, um, I can then take that back to Michael and then um, come back to Zoom to get a decision. Sounds good. Thank you, judges. That was very fun. And yeah.